Now our next topic is strain rosettes. Now let us see what is strain rosettes. We know that stresses cannot be measured directly. Stresses cannot be measured directly. But strains can be measured directly by using standard strain gauges. And earlier we have seen that three stress strain components, two normal strains, epsilon x and epsilon y, and one shear strain, that is, and gamma xy, can completely define the state of strain at a point, that is, completely define define the state of strain state of strain at a point but measuring shear strain that is tau xy measuring it is quite difficult quite difficult to measure quite difficult to measure compared to a normal strain component. So what we can do, we will measure normal strain component along three different direction. We will measure, measure the normal strain components normal strain components in three different directions different directions and from that from these three different directions value of normal strain, we can calculate the principal strains. That is, from, from this value, three different directions of strain components, we can determine epsilon max and epsilon min. That is principal strains. And from these two value, from these two value, we can we can calculate principal stresses also that is sigma max and sigma min. So this technique of measuring normal strains, normal strains, normal strains in three different direction, these techniques is called strain rosette. So measuring normal strain components in three different directions, that techniques is called strain rosette one standard strain strain rosette where we will measure the strain components along 45 degree direction that is say these are three strain gauges and the angle between one to another is 45 degrees so this angle is 45 degree and there is another strain gauge that is also 45 degree so this arrangement of strain gauges, these are strain gauge. So three strain gauges, one, two, three, and angle between one and two is 45 degrees. Similarly, two and three is 45 degree. So this arrangement is called strain rosettes. This is called strain rosettes. This arrangement is called strain rosettes. And this is one standard strain roset where angle is 45 degree. Let me show you here. Here angle is 45 degree. And say we get the value here epsilon 0, here epsilon 45, and here epsilon 90. That is along OA strain value is epsilon 0, along O2 strain value is uh, epsilon 45, and along O3 
measured value is epsilon 90. Now from these three value, we can draw the mode circle. We can draw the mode circle, mode circle. If we can draw the mode circle, we can easily calculate epsilon max and epsilon minimum. And from that, from these two value, we'll calculate sigma max and sigma mean. So indirectly, we have measured the stress values. So how to draw the Mohr circle from these three values? Let us see how to draw the construction of Mohr circle from the reading of a 45 degree strain rosette. What are the readings? Epsilon 0, Epsilon 45 and Epsilon 90. So let us first draw the axis that is gamma by 2. Now say this line that is L1 gives the value of epsilon 0. This one that is line L2 gives the value of epsilon 90. Epsilon 90 and epsilon 45 in between them that is L3 epsilon 45. Now this is this is phi equal to 0 degree and this is that is epsilon 90 is phi equal to 90 degree. So that is this line that is epsilon phi equal to 90 degree. So in between these two points, say this is, this point is E, this is F and this is G. So midpoint of EF will be center of the Mohr circle. So that is C. So that is C. Now we got point C. Now measure CG. CG and this cut this line from center E that is such that this say this point is A and here CG will be equal to EA. So take a point A such that such that CG is equal to EA. So EA. Now join CA and taking radius CA, draw the circle. Draw the circle. Taking radius CA, draw the circle. Then what happens? Sorry, I am extremely sorry, the circle is not appropriate because it should pass through this point also. Why I will explain later. Okay. So this is the circle from center C and radius A. Now what is the construction? Let us understand. Say now join these two. Now join these two. G and say this point is H. Now, if we consider triangle, triangle A, E, C, that is this triangle, A, E, C, and triangle C, G, H, C, G, H. What we have? C, G is equal to E, A that is this is equal to this both are radius c a and c h are also equal and these angles are 90 degree so these two triangles are congruent if these two angles are congruent then you can con understand that this angle becomes 90 degree this angles becomes 90 degree that was our objective because for 
we know here say this is epsilon 0 is epsilon x and this is epsilon y and gamma xy is unknown here instead of that we have this value epsilon 45 degree so normal strain at any place that value is known but we know that that when we draw the circle if this angle x to this angle is 45 degree then in more circle that angle will be 90 degree if actually this is epsilon 45 this is epsilon 0 and this is epsilon 90 if this angle is 45 degree then in more circle the angle will be 90 degree our objective was to make an angle between ca and ch such that that will be 90 degree our objective was to make angle ach is 90 degree that's why we have done this construction that is cg is equal to ea cg is ea then these two triangles becomes congruent if these two triangles are congruent then this angle ACH will be 90 degree. So this is the most circle now. Now EA, this part is we have determined this will be gamma XY by 2. So from this most circle, we got the value of gamma XY. That is, we got gamma XY. Now one can ask that how this angle becomes 90 degree. Say this angle is alpha. Then, then this angle will be also alpha and this as this is 90 degree so this angle is 90 degree minus alpha this angle is 90 degree minus alpha now if this is 90 minus alpha and this is alpha then sum of this is 90 the remaining angle will be 90 degree so thus we make the angle is 90 degree and completes the mode circuit so this is the technique to measure, uh, to construct the mode circle from a reading of 45 degree strain loss. Now from the mode circle, we'll get the value of epsilon max and epsilon mean. If this is O and say this point is I and this is, this point is J sorry here f is somewhere here actually f is this point so epsilon max is epsilon max is oi and epsilon mean is oj so from this mode circle now this is very easy to determine epsilon max and epsilon mean and now the question is how to calculate sigma max and sigma mean this is our objective to calculate the stresses, principal stresses from epsilon mean, uh, sorry, epsilon max and epsilon minima. Now these two are known to us. These two are known to us. Now we will apply the generalized Hooke's law to calculate sigma max and sigma mean. We know that epsilon max is 1 by e, 1 by e sigma max minus mu sigma mean. So, sigma max from this equation we can write sigma max is e epsilon max plus mu sigma mean. And say this is equation 1. We will apply Hooke's law once again. Epsilon minimum is 1 by E sigma mean minus mu sigma max. And we will get sigma mean is sigma mean is E epsilon minimum plus mu epsilon max. And this is equation 2. Now put the value of sigma mean into equation 1 here. Into equation 1. What we will get? That is 
let me write down equation one once again epsilon max is e epsilon max plus mu epsilon mean is e sorry sigma mean sigma mean is here e epsilon mean plus mu sigma max so now let us take sigma max common sigma max this is 1 minus this side mu into mu is minus mu square is e epsilon max plus e mu epsilon minimum e mu epsilon minimum so let me write down properly e mu epsilon minimum now we get the value of sigma max sigma max is what if we take e common then epsilon max plus mu epsilon mean epsilon max plus mu epsilon mean divided by 1 minus mu square so this is the value of maximum principal stress say equation 3 now how to get how to get the value of uh, epsilon mean put the value of epsilon max here then you will get the value now let us write the equation 2 equation 2 is epsilon mean is equal to epsilon mean is equal to e e epsilon mean sorry sigma mean is e epsilon minimum write down equation number two plus mu sigma max plus mu sigma max now put the value of sigma max here you will get e epsilon minimum plus mu one minus mu square e epsilon max plus mu epsilon minimum and that will be we'll take e common one minus mu square epsilon minimum minus mu square epsilon minimum plus mu epsilon max sorry let me write uh, i have not enough space here so it is this we have to just manipulate so that is sigma minimum so sigma minimum minimum normal stress that is 1 minus mu square will take e common will get epsilon minimum minus this into epsilon minimum so mu square epsilon minimum plus mu epsilon max plus mu square epsilon minimum epsilon minimum so this epsilon mu square epsilon minimum and minimum will be cancelled so epsilon minimum is e epsilon mean plus mu epsilon max divided by 1 minus mu square so here you can take a bracket also so this is the expression for minimum principal stress or minimum normal stress so let let it write down it once again e epsilon max plus mu epsilon minimum 1 minus mu square similarly epsilon minimum sorry sigma minimum normal stress minimum plus mu epsilon max 1 minus mu square so these two are expression of 
principal stresses. Sigma is principal stress, sigma for stress and epsilon for strain. So ultimately we got the values of principal stresses. Now let us solve one problem from strain Rosset and this is from UPSC engineering services examination 2010. The data obtained from a rectangular strain gauge Rosset attached to stressed steel member are epsilon 0 is minus 220 into 10 to the power minus 6. Epsilon 45 is 120 into 10 to the power minus 6. Epsilon 90 is plus 220 into 10 to the power minus 6. Given that E is 2 into 10 to the power 5 Newton per millimeter square. That is, that is 2 into 10 to the power 5 MPa. So from that it is 2 into 10 to the power 2 GPa. So E becomes 200 GPa. And value of Poisson ratio is also given that is 0.3. Calculate the values of principal stresses acting at a point and their directions. So what are the values get from the strain Rosset? Epsilon 0 is minus 220 into 10 to the power minus 6. Epsilon 45 is 120 into 10 to the power minus 6 and Epsilon 90 is plus 220 into 10 to the power minus 6. Now let us first draw the axis that is Epsilon and Gamma by 2. This is 10 by 10 to the power minus 6 and this is also by 10 to the power minus 6. Now 0 is at negative, so this is at negative normal strain. So here say this is line, this is the value of epsilon that is L0. Now epsilon 45 degree is 120, say somewhere here. So this is L45 and L90 is somewhere here. This is L90. So this is epsilon 90 and this is epsilon 45. Say this point is E, this point is F and this point is G and this is O. Now what will be the center of the Mohr circle between E and F and E and F is nothing but point O that is 0, 0. So now what we have to do? So this is the center also O comma C. O comma C that is the center of the mode circle also. Now take CG and, and locate point A such that CG, CG is equal to EA. CG is EA and here that is 0, 45 and 90. So 0 to 45 is rotated by 45 degree in counterclockwise direction. So in more circle it will rotate by 90 degree in counterclockwise direction. Do that. So we look at A now join CA and taking CA as radius and center C draw the circle. C at center and C as center and C A as radius draw the circle. This is not exactly circle. If such that then say this point is H. So this point is H. Now here these two triangles C E A this triangle C E A this 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 triangle and triangle C G H that is this triangle, this triangle and this triangle. They become congruent that is C G is equal to E A. Both C A and C H are radius so they these two are equal. 
and this is 90 degrees. So they become congruent. So if this angle is alpha, then this is also alpha. If this is alpha, then this angle is 90 degree minus alpha. Now this angle becomes what? 90 degree. If this is alpha and this is 90 minus alpha, if you minus them from 180, you will get that angle, that is angle ACH is 90 degree. And that was our objective to make the angle between uh, the make the angle ACH 90 degree because we have to rotate it by 90 degree to get the plane which is 45 degree from phi equal to 0. So actually epsilon 0 A is this line is phi equal to 0 degree and this line is phi equal to 45 degree actually in more circle it will be 90 degree. And this plane, that is this plane, this is phi equal to 90 degree. And this, this angle is 180 degree here. So this is the construction of Mohr circle. So we have constructed the Mohr circle. Now what is Ea value? Value of Ea? Ea is nothing but gamma xy by 2. So this is gamma xy by 2. And that value that we know Cg, Cg is 120 and CG and EA are same. So, gamma XY by 2 is 120 into 10 to the power minus 6 into 10 to the power minus 6. So, we get the value of gamma XY by 2. Now, we can calculate the values of principal strains. So, principal strain, say this point is GH I and this is J. So, epsilon max is oi and epsilon minimum is oj we can calculate them from the geometry also here from the Mohr circle and we can another option is we can get them from the formulas as we have got the value of gamma xy by 2 so epsilon max sorry we know the values of epsilon max that will be epsilon x plus epsilon y by 2 plus root over epsilon x minus epsilon y by 2 plus gamma xy by 2 whole square. That is putting the value we will get max is x is minus 220 plus 220. So this becomes 0, center becomes 0 plus minus 220 minus 220 by 2. Sorry, this will be a square, there will be a square plus we know the value this directly 120 square. So this becomes 0, this becomes 0 and value of this is 250.6 and already this all having 10 to the power minus 6. So I'm writing here that is 10 to the power minus 6. Values of epsilon max. So what is epsilon minimum? Epsilon minimum having only this term. This there will be a minus sign. So 0 minus 250.6 into 10 to the power. I'm not writing here. So 0.6 and that is minus 250. 0.6 into 10 to the power minus 6. Now what is sigma max? Sigma max is, we know that E epsilon max plus mu epsilon minimum 1 minus mu square. Now let us put the values that is 200 GPA into 10 to the power 9, epsilon max is, epsilon max is 250.6 and epsilon minimum is minus 0 0.3 into 250.6, both having 10 to the power minus 6, so in taking common 10 to the power minus 6, 1.0.3 square. So this is the value of sigma max and calculating that we will get sigma max is 
38.56 MPa. 38.56 MPa. 38.56 MPa. Now what will be sigma minimum? That is minimum normal stress. E epsilon minimum plus mu epsilon maximum 1 minus mu square. Now put the values 200 into 10 to the power 9 epsilon minimum what is epsilon minimum minus 250.6 minus 250.6 plus 0 0.3 into 250 sorry 250.6 both having minus 10 must 10 to the power minus 6 terms minus 0 0.3 whole square and that gives you minimum that gives you minus 38.56 MPa. So we have calculated principal stresses. What was the problem? Calculate the values of principal stresses. So sigma max is 38.56 MPa and sigma mean we get minus 38.56 MPa. Next is acting at a point and their direction that is direction of principal plane that can be found from that can be found from Mohr circle also that can be found from Mohr circle also. So here what is the uh, what is the orientation of principal plane. What is principal plane? That is this is principal plane because here strengths are maximum so stress will be also maximum and this is phi equal to zero plane already mentioned. So principal plane is in this direction that is clockwise direction clockwise direction and this angle is this angle is we know that 2 phi p. So tan of 2 phi p tan of 2 phi p is what e a by e a by c e this point is e this is e so e a by c e so tan of 2 phi p tan of 2 phi p is what e a by c e e a by c e what is e a E A is 120, we know that. What is C E? C2 is 220. C2 is 220. For calculating that, 2 phi p is 2 phi p will be 28.61 degree and and this is 2 phi p and another orientation of principal plane that is where minimum strain is acting, that is this one. So this plus 180 degree will be there. So we have to add another 180 degree. So orientation of principal plane acts in another 180 degree, but twice of angle is another 180 degree. So plus 180 becomes 208.61 degree. So phi p becomes 14.31 degree and 104.31 degree. And both are means they are in clockwise direction because we have seen that this di direction is clockwise. So this is the answer to the problem. Thank you.